Joseph John Thompson, who's usually referred to as J.J. Thompson, was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1906 in recognition of the great merits of his theoretical and experimental investigations on the conduction of electricity by gases. J.J. Thompson managed to measure the charge to mass ratio of the electron by using cathode ray tubes similar to those that we saw in the last video. So this figure is taken from Thompson's paper which he published in 1897 and shows the equipment set up for his very famous experiment. So Thompson conducted his experiments with the aim of gaining information about cathode rays which weren't too well understood at the time. So he started by demonstrating that cathode rays had a negative charge. In order to do this, he used this apparatus. So this figure is taken from his own paper. In this apparatus, cathode rays are released from A. They will travel in a straight line if no magnetic field is applied. So at the bottom of the apparatus is an electrometer. And this is contained within a cylindrical sheath of metal with a slit in it. So when the cathode rays travel in a straight line, none of them manage to make it through the slit in the sheath. And so none of them are detected. He then applied magnetic fields and he knew the direction of the magnetic fields he was applying. So he could apply magnetic fields to get the cathode rays to bend down and be detected by the electrometer. So pass through the little slit in the sheath. And from knowing the direction of the magnetic field that he applied, he could work out the charge on the cathode rays, which we now call electrons, and he proved in this way that they were actually negative. Now in his really famous experiment shown here, Thompson applied a potential difference between two plates. So in his diagram, these plates are shown as D and E. When he applied a potential difference between these plates, this established an electric field between the plates. And then when he shot cathode rays through it, there was a deflection due to the electric field between these plates. So Thompson could measure the deflection and from that he could come up with an expression for the charge to mass ratio of the electron. So to do this, you need to use the kinematic equation. So let's work through what he did. Suppose that the electrons are entering the distance between the plates with a horizontal velocity given by V. We'll assume that the plates have a length L. Then the time spent between the plates is going to be given by T is equal to L divided by V. And while the cathode rays are between those plates, they are experiencing a force due to that electric field. So because they are experiencing a force, they are accelerating. So using Newton's second law, we can write, well, the acceleration is equal to the force divided by the mass. And the force in this case is the electric force. So this is equal to EQ divided by M. Now, initially, these cathode rays or electrons had no vertical velocity. So we can use our kinematic equations to write that the amount of deflection, which we'll call Y, is equal to a half AT squared. And then using what we've just written, we can say, well, this is equal to a half EQ on M times L squared on V squared. So Thompson realized that he could find the velocity of the electron as it entered the region between the plates by applying a magnetic field. If he applied a magnetic field until there was no deflection of the electron, this would tell him that the magnetic force and the electric force were then balanced. So as an equation, he could write QVB, the magnetic force, is equal to EQ, the electric force, which he could then rearrange to get, well, the velocity of the electron was equal to E divided by B. He could then substitute this value for the initial velocity back into the deflection that he measured when there was no magnetic field. And so this becomes Y is equal to a half EQ on M times L squared divided by E squared on B squared. And these electric field terms partially cancel. So this becomes equals to a half Q on M L squared B squared on E. Now, 
most of the things in this equation he could measure. He could measure the deflection of the electron as it passed between the plates. He knew the length of the plates. He knew what magnetic field was needed to cancel out this deflection and he knew the electric field. So he could rearrange this and write that the charge divided by the mass or Q over M is equal to 2YE divided by B squared L squared and all these things were known so he could get a value for that charge divided by the mass. So when he substituted in his values, he found that the charge of an electron divided by the mass of the electron was given by 0.7 times 10 to the 11 coulombs per kilogram. And this was over a thousand times bigger than the value before, telling him that the mass of the electron was much, much smaller than previously thought. So compared to the acceptor value today, this is the same order of magnitude. The charge on the electron divided by the mass of the electron is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the minus 11 divided by 9.109 times 10 to the minus 31, which is equal to 1.75 times 10 to the 11 coulombs per kilogram. So Thompson made great strides forwards in this in showing that electrons were a lot lighter than previously measured and were definitely negatively charged. So he went on from this to propose the plum pudding model, which we now know is not correct. So he envisaged atoms as a large sphere of positive charge with these small electrons embedded throughout.